What is the history of the Otomi people in pre-Hispanic and early colonial Mexico? For starters, we need to clarify what we mean by Otomi. As Mexican historian Pedro Carrasco Pisana points out in his classic book, Los Otomías, we need to distinguish between the Otomi language and the different groups of Otomi peoples, who are just as diverse today as they were 500 years ago. In his book, he points out two groups of culturally related Otomis. The first are the Otomi groups who lived in Mesoamerica, which include the Otomi, the Masawa, Matlatzincas, and Okuitecas. The second family of ethno-historic Otomis are those who lived in the northern Mexican region. They include the Pames and Chichimeca Chonas. Another thing to point out is that although there are linguistic similarities in the languages spoken by these Otomi groups, they were still very distinct. There are thus six Otomi languages, which are Otomi, Masawa, Matlatzinka, Okuiteca, Pame, and Chichimeca Chonas, which of course correspond to the distinct Otomi groups mentioned earlier. The Mexicas and Purépecha refer to distinct Otomi groups by many different names. The term Otomi comes from the Nahuatl word Tomit, meaning one who hunts birds by shooting them with arrows. However, in their own language, the Otomis from Mesoamerica refer to themselves as the New. Matlatzinka was also a Nahuatl-derived term meaning people who use the net, which referred to their hunting practices in which they caught fish and game with nets. The Purépechas, called Matlatzincas, who lived in the border territories such as Charro, as Pirindas. Pirinda literally means in the middle. This was a name designated to those Otomis because they literally lived in between the border territories of the Mexica and Purépecha states. Depending on which side of these indigenous borderlands these Otomis lived in, Pirindas fought for both the Mexica and Purépecha polities. Despite the diversity of various Otomi groups, the Spaniards often categorized them under the Otomi umbrella due to their linguistic similarities. What were pre-Hispanic Otomi spiritual practices like? Since the Otomis were not a monolithic group, ethno-historic sources point to a variety of spiritual practices among them. According to Carrasco Pisana, the Otomis generally cremated their dead and practiced bloodletting traditions. Some also believe that human sorcerers could become shape-shifting animals, known as naguales, by drinking animal blood. What about Otomi cosmologies? The Relación Geográfica for Querétaro records that the Otomis also believed in Quetzalcoatl as an entity who created the universe. Mesoamerican Otomis also certainly believed in life after death. According to the Codice Vaticano Rios, Otomis believed that there were nine superimposed layers of heaven known as Omeyokan, Wie, Narich, Nepan, Wicha. Like the Nahuas, they also had their own mythological stories of previous worlds destroyed by a flood. Who were some of the deities the various Otomi groups worshipped in pre-Hispanic times? Geographic surveys of Otomi regions in the 16th century record that some groups paid homage to stone and wood idols. The Relación Geográfica for Querétaro, for example, mentions that local Otomis paid reverence to Padre Viejo y Madre Vieja, the old father and old mother, and that there was a fiesta for Madre Vieja in the Otomi month of Antashme. Pisana believes that Padre Viejo was perhaps similar to the Nahua deity of Huehuetelt, while Madre Vieja could be equated with Tonan. Similar to the Nahuas who paid homage to the fire deity Huitzilopochtli, the Otomis, Matlatzincas, and Masawas of central Mexico gave central importance to the fire entity known as Otontecutli, who was described as patron of warriors and deceased men. According to the Codice Teyeriano Remensis, the Nahua deity Xochiquetzal was also celebrated by the Matlatzincas. Other Nahua entities the Otomi revered were Nopitecha, patroness of trash, as well as Tlazoteoc, described as goddess of earth and moon. The Otomis of Mesoamerican origin date back to at least the times of the Toltec state, the Altepet Tolan, from approximately 674 to 1122 CE. 
The histories of these Otomis come from indigenous accounts recorded within the first few hundred years after the Spanish conquest of Mexico Tenochtitlan. They were compiled by Spanish chroniclers like Fray Bernardino de Sahagún and his team of indigenous ethnographers in the Florentine Codex. Some accounts also come from mestizo chroniclers like Fernando de Alba Cortés y Xlixochic, who was not only born from Spanish grandparents, but also Mexica nobles from Texcoco. Notably, he was also the great-great-grandson of Cuitlahuac. As Carrasco Pisana notes, the Otomis, who were likely part of the ancient Mimishkoa groups, may have even predated the Toltecs. The Otomis are said to have descended from Ilanque, also known as Ilanquake, the ancestral mother who gave birth to six children at Chicomostoc. Six nations were named after the descendants of these children, whose names were Shelwa, Tenoch, Ulmecat, Xicalancat, Mixtecat, and Otomitl. The descendants of Otomitl would go on to inhabit the central Mexican regions of Xilotepec, Tula, and Otomba. According to the third book of the Florentine Codex, the Otomis were one of many wandering groups who accompanied the Toltecs from the Panuco region south towards Guatemala. They settled for some time in a province known as Tamoanchan and later migrated to Teotihuacan. Otomis also lived in the Toltec capital city of Tula. Within the Toltec state, Otomi was one of the most spoken languages. While these chronicles remembered the Toltecas as accomplished intellectuals, they conveyed that their Otomi allies were skilled fighters who defended the Toltec frontiers against enemy invaders. Yet, they were no match for the Chichimecas, who overpowered the Otomi Mimishkoa forces and contributed to the collapse of the Toltec Confederation. Accounts of the Chichimeca conquest of Tula reveal that the Otomis were not restricted to Mexico's Gulf Coast. They also lived in ancient central zones like Toluca, Xilotepec, and Michoacán. In Toltec times, there were also Otomis and Matlatzincas who lived in Tlaximaloyan, also known as Taximaroa, and today known as Ciudad Hidalgo in Michoacán. The Otomis and Matlatzincas who lived in the Toluca Valley would transition from being defenders of the Toltec frontiers in 1200 CE to defenders of the Mexica and Purépecha borderlands hundreds of years later. After the collapse of the Toltec state, the Otomis and Matlatzincas continued to live in the central western Mexican territories that would later become part of the Purépecha and Mexica border territories. Even in these times, the Mexicas and Purépechas recognized the distinct hand-to-hand -hand fighting capabilities of the Otomis. Mexica warriors who proved themselves in battles could receive the title of Otomic. According to the Relación de Michoacán, Purépechas knew that the Mexicas kept Otomis on their frontiers because they were, quote, brave men, which was the reason Montezuma assigned them to the frontiers. It was also known that Purépechas also assigned Otomis, Matlatincas, and Pames, referred to as Chichimecas, to the frontier territories, such as Acámbaro and Taximaroa. However, as mentioned previously, there were already Otomis and Matlatincas living in the Mexica and Purépecha borderlands for hundreds of years. Many Otomis began to abandon their Mexica allies in central Mexico, because the Mexica began to treat them like conquered enemies instead of allies during the formation of the Mexica Triple Alliance. Refusing to be treated as tributaries, many of the disgruntled Otomis, primarily from Xilotepec, cut ties with the Mexica. Hundreds, perhaps thousands of Otomis went north and south. Some formed alliances with the Tlaxcalans, while others went south to join the ranks of the Purépecha. The Relaciones Geográficas for Michoacán, for example, recall the stories of Otomi chiefs who took their people out of the Mexica territories and relocated them to eastern Michoacán. The earliest recorded Otomi diaspora from these accounts reports that four of these chiefs left the Mexica province of Xilotepec with 60 of their followers. They spoke with the first Casonci of the Purépecha state, Tariacuri, who allowed them to settle in Acámbaro, today in Guanajuato. In the other accounts, an Otomi leader named Dimax took his people out of Mexico due to, quote, mistreatment by the Mexican kings. Dimax and his people were allowed to settle in Taimel with the approval of the Casonci, Sisispandacuare. 
These Otomi groups were one of many who successfully helped the Purépecha defend against Mexica armies that invaded Michoacán, especially during two major military engagements. The Otomis, Pames, and Matlatzincas launched two successful counter-assaults. First, they successfully fought back the armies of Tlacaelel and Ashayacatl around 476 to 477. They also won a second time when Moctezuma Xocoyotzin sent the famed Tlaxcalan warrior Tlahuicole to invade the Purépecha in 1515. Tlahuicole, whose name is said to have caused fear among those who heard it, was previously captured by the Mexicas. Instead of executing him, Moctezuma had him lead a Mexica campaign against the Purépecha, which was also a failure. The Purépecha and their Otomi allies once again slaughtered the Mexicas and their allies, who also included Otomi allies. There were reportedly thousands of dead Mexica soldiers and their allies littered in the fields of the Toluca Valley. Thanks to these Otomi groups, the Mexicas would never surmount such an ambitious campaign against the Purépechas ever again. There were so many bones that in the year 1798, the Franciscan and chronicler Fray Pablo Beaumont claimed that he could still see the bones of dead Mexica warriors from these previous wars scattered across the Toluca region that once served as a frontier that separated Michoacán and Mexico City. 